So yeah, this is a game we always wanted to see ported over to PC, but it was never done. But on the One X Player 2, with the power this thing's putting out, we can definitely emulate this awesome Xbox 360 game. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some high-end emulation on the upcoming One X Player 2. Now if you're not familiar with this device, as you can see we do have these detachable controllers. But other than that, we're actually working with a really powerful x86 handheld. And if you're interested in checking out, you know, Windows running on this with some PC games and things like that, I have made one video already. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But this video is strictly dedicated to emulation. We're going to be testing out some GameCube, some Wii, some Wii. EU. We're going to go with some PS2, some 3DS, some PS3, and even some Nintendo Switch using the Yuzu emulator. Now, before we jump into it, I want to give you a rundown on the specs here, just in case you're not familiar with the One X Player 2. And, you know, if you're interested in learning more, the Indiegogo is live right now. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But just taking a look at the basic specs, we got a really beefy system here. It's powered by the Ryzen 7 6800U, so we've got 8 cores here, 16 threads, and a boost up to 4.7 GHz. When it comes to the GPU, we've got the new Radeon 680M. It's based on RDNA 2, and it clocks up to 2200 MHz in this unit. This also relies on LPDDR5 RAM running at 6400 MHz, and they're offering a 16GB model and a 32GB model. We've also got a 2280 M.2 SSD plus a micro SD card slot. And one of my favorite things about the One X Player 2 is the display. I'm a huge fan of these larger displays, and we've got an 8.4 inch IPS at 2560 by 1600. And when it comes to the battery, it is a lot larger than some of these handhelds on the market right now, coming in at 65.5 watt hours. And this thing actually offers 100 watt fast charging. Now, one thing I'd like to mention here is, you know, we've got the detachable controllers, but they don't work independently of each other. This will be officially shipping with a controller grip, so these slide right in there, and we can use it wirelessly then. But they do make a physical connection to the handheld itself, so we don't have to worry about any kind of latency or anything there. And when it comes to the analog sticks, these are using the bigger hall sensor analog sticks. And even the triggers around back are hall sensor based. I'm super excited to show you what this thing can do with emulation. And like I mentioned, if you're interested in checking out some PC gameplay, I've got that video. Link is in the description. But let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing I wanted to test out here was my favorite front end for Windows. This is known as Big Box. You could also call it Launch Box, but we're actually in the Big Box version right now. I actually have a lot of viewers asking about this every time I test a new handheld, and I just wanted to kind of show off the performance here. And by the way, this is actually running from an external hard drive. It's a mechanical drive, and it's running over USB 3, and we're still getting really great performance here with Big Box. But if you're not familiar with LaunchBox and Big Box, what we have here is an easy-to-use emulation front end. We can import our games, easily set up our emulators, and it's going to download all of our metadata and artwork. It'll also download videos for us. We've got hundreds of different themes that we can use with this just makes it really easy to start games up from and keeps them very organized okay so first up we've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom and I've got Afterburner on screen so you can see what's going on right now I've got the TDP set at 20 watts but we're not pulling 20 watts with this game running at 1080p if you take a look at the CPU package power we're right there at 15 watts with this one but you know there are harder to emulate games when it comes to the Dolphin emulator be it Wii or GameCube and what I always like to test here is F-Zero GX on the hardest track. Same exact settings, DirectX 11 back in, we're at 1080p, and as you can see it's now pulling around 17 watts, so it does take a little more to run this game at 1080p, but we could always drop the resolution down to 720p, and at 720p this is only going to pull 12 watts, and for the first one we took a look at, Tatsunoko vs Capcom, it's right there at 9 watts. But either way you look at it, the One X Player 2 can emulate Wii and GameCube games really well. Moving over to some PS2 emulation using PCSX2, 1080p, DirectX 11, and you could always go with Vulkan with the latest development builds if you want to, but I've had great luck with DirectX 11 on these x86 chips, so I just left it right there. And the 6800U can definitely handle PS2 emulation, but it does take a little more wattage than we saw with Wii and GameCube. And it really comes down to the resolution we're running at here and the fact that I don't have any hacks on with PCSX2. So we could go down to 720p, turn on some cycle skips if you want to. But I wanted to have the emulator set up for accuracy and as you can see, even God of War 2 is running at 60fps. Of course, we are over 15 watts, but again, dropping that resolution down will definitely help out with that. 
I think it looks great at 1080p and it's playing just fine in my opinion. So in the past, with these Ryzen APUs, we've always had issues with Xbox 360 emulation using the Xenia emulator, up until recently. There's a Canary build of Xenia, you can head over to the Xenia Canary GitHub page and download it. Lots of great optimizations, and when it comes to the Ryzen 6800U, we can even play Red Dead Redemption. Now you see we're at 30 FPS, I don't have VSync off. If VSync was off, we'd only be running at about 45, so we can't quite hit 60 with it. But at 30, we've still got a playable version of Red Dead Redemption on PC now. And we can even run Xbox 360 games like Forza 2 here at 60. Now actually with VSync off, this will run at about 90 FPS on the 6800U. But again, I've just left VSync on and it's fully playable. Personally, huge fan of this emulator here and I've been testing out a lot of stuff in my free time on the 6800U. It's doing a really great job. I also wanted to see how well this thing ran 3DS games using the Citra emulator and due to the latest Radeon drivers with better OpenGL support, we're getting great performance with 3DS on these chips. Even if you were to go over to Ryzen 5000 with Vega graphics, you'll notice a big jump with those newer Radeon drivers, so this is really awesome to see. When it comes to Wii U emulation using the SimU emulator, a lot of the stuff actually runs really well at 1080p, 15 watts using the Vulkan backend. So just like a lot of emulators out there, I mean, we've got some easier to emulate stuff, we've got some harder to emulate stuff, and even something like Bayonetta 2 at 1080p, Vulkan backend runs great at 15 watts. But if you wanted to do, let's say, Breath of the Wild at 15 watts, you'd have to do that one at 30, or you could take it up to 30 watts and do 60 FPS at 720p with that game. Okay, so here we have some PS3 emulation, and we're only at 15 watts with Tekken 6. It is an easier one to emulate for PS3, along with games like Demon's Souls and even Ninja Gaiden. Those will run at full speed at only 15 watts on the 6800U. But just like a lot of emulators out there, we've got some harder to emulate games that do require a little more, like Skate 3. As a lot of us already know, this is a harder to emulate one, loves those extra cores and threads, and we've got to use them with the 6800U. I mean, we've got a lot of them here that we could spare. We're pulling 30 watts from the APU right now to get this to run at 720p 60fps. Now there are a few things we could do to kind of lower this wattage, like lower the resolution from the emulator itself, but I just kind of left it with the out-of-box experience, and I mean, it does perform great. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at was some Switch emulation using Yuzu. So we're in dock mode right now with the emulator, which allows us to run this game at 1080p, and as you can see, we're pulling around 30 watts. Now we could go to handheld mode, and what that's going to do is actually take the resolution down to 720p, and with both of the games that I tested, we're only going to pull around 24 watts from that APU to get these to run at full speed. But I mean, overall, this does a really great job with Switch emulation. The 1X Player 2 can definitely handle our favorite high-end emulators, and in this video you didn't see any lower-end stuff like N64, PSP, or Dreamcast, and that's because it's going to run it even under 15 watts. You're not going to have an issue with those easier-to-run lower-end emulators. I just kind of wanted to see what we could really do with it, and yeah, as you saw, even up to Nintendo Switch and PS3 is possible on the 1X Player 2 with that Ryzen 7 6800U. Now, if you're interested in learning more, maybe even back in the Indiegogo, I'll leave a link in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in checking out the PC gaming performance of this device, link for that video is in the description. And by the way, this also supports USB 4, so I did some eGPU testing, and we can unlock a lot of graphics performance depending on the GPU you add to this device. I'd also like to know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, what do you think about the performance here? I know we've seen the 6800U in the past, but not in this kind of form factor. I really love this 8.4 inch display. I know it's got a much higher resolution than we're really going to be running a lot of our games at, but it's still really nice to have for media consumption and even playing some older like source-based games. Left 4 Dead 2 can run at 2K on this. It'll actually run at 4K, but we've only got a 2.5K display here, and it looks absolutely amazing. So yeah, let me know what you think about the 1X Player 2 in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.